Five points. Five points on the history, maritime history of Singapore before 1800. Just outside our beautiful view here. The old strait of Singapore is in fact that little maritime stretch right there uh, between Sentosa and what is now the harbour front area. This is a very narrow waterway and I will explain in a moment why this was chosen and not a bit further out in the water. If you went through at night time, you had to ask the local inhabitants, the Orang Laut, that you wanted to go through. So they took these coconut shells and they put burning um, tree resins in, benzoin usually, and they would put them like, like little um, lamps and then they would mark the rocks and the spots that were dangerous. If you go out there into the middle of the straits and the water flows are so strong, the problem is that the water is actually quite deep as well. You couldn't throw your anchor. Second point, have a good look at this map of Singapore and the region from the year 1615. So Singapore is not just a port on an east-west axis. It is also a port at the end of a river estuary, the classic Malay polity. Point number three, the town. Is there a town? There is a hunch among some historians, even archaeologists today, who say, well, probably the one around Kampung Glum, because the archaeological evidence from the one on the Singapore River really doesn't give us very many clues for the period afterwards. But the archaeological evidence found in the late 60s and 70s from the Kampung Glam area do hint that there was something there in the 17th century. Singapura in various spellings, um, at least 20 different variants for the word Singapura, and sometimes it's called Shabandaria, obviously indicating the presence of a Shabandar or a portmaster. The most described people living here are the Orang Laut, and they are known to live in two types of boats. Some of the boats are long and thin, we are told, and others are round. These round boats are an interesting curiosity because they are, the Portuguese refer to them as baloish, which means balloon. My fifth point concerns early colonization plans for Singapore. These are actually quite intriguing and interesting because they confirm that locals as well as the nascent European powers recognize the significance, firstly, of a functioning port in the 16th and 17th centuries, and secondly, that they recognize the strategic location of Singapore. We know that Singapore was destroyed and reconstructed several times. We know that. Just yesterday or the day before, I had lunch with one of my history colleagues, and he said, so how many times? I said, at least four times, possibly five, maybe even more. But those are the ones that at least we can reconstruct based on records. This is actually a depiction of a showdown between the Portuguese and the Sultan of Johor's navy. Um, the, the nomenclature is there. That's B is Pulau Tekong. D is supposed to be um, Changi Point. Three is uh, Pulau Ubi. You know, this is not scientific, aren't they? So I got the map, you know? 